to today's class, right? So today, uh, the topic, if you see the content we have done so far, right? So we have covered points till row number seven. So day five, uh, we've covered all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you need to practice on these items. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the class tomorrow, right? And uh, then we will discuss this notifications and reporting today. I think we are not left with much time. So maybe uh, today we will be spent spending time more on notifications part. Okay. But there was one thing because in the last session, we kind of, uh, we had to wrap the session a little early, if you remember, for task management. There's one thing which I just want to tell you about the visual task board again. So if you remember, we have seen visual task board again as a part of task management activity, right? So I just tell you, we'll create, a, so there were three task boards, right? Flexible, free form and guided. We'll create a guided one right now. We'll see, show visual task board. This is guided one because we are opting for a choice list there, right? Only for a choice or a reference list, we get a guided task board. Otherwise we get a flexible task board. So you see it is guided here because it is telling you that it is, uh, you have the right things already here, right? So there are task board tools. This is a quick panel, right? Then you have these lanes and these are the cards. These are, these are the cards on these lanes. For example, you can add a card here, right? You can move a card from here to here. Yeah, so I told you there is a problem in my instance. So that is why things are not getting updated. Uh, but then yeah, in the case of guided form, in the case of guided, visual task board, things should get updated. They should, if I am changing the priority or whatever I'm changing as per the lane, it should actually work, right? The idea is to tell you that you should be aware of these uh, concepts also. So for, for example, if you go here, right, you can see the boards I own, the boards I've created just now. This is, this is the board I have created, okay? So many boards we have created here. Now, this is where you can do a filter by title or number, you can put due by overdue 24 hours, one week, one month due date. You can also connect with board members. For example, if I just click on this, it gives you the option to connect with those people, right? So I have, right. I can just ask those person to, uh, to actually work on that particular thing. So that is something I can do. So, I mean, kind of chatting, a real time chatting with the members in this group, right? And this is for info, which tells you that this, this particular task board is based on what, right? So it is, this is a number, this is board type is guided. There are so many assignees here. There are so many vertical lanes, so many tasks. Can you see this here, right? And you can also edit this filter and sort. We want to have some less records. You can edit this filter also. This filter is exactly same as the list view, which we were doing earlier, <clears throat> right? You can select, for example, active is true. If I just use this filter. It will change things for us, right? So it is updating the visual task board. Vertical lane field, swim lane field. I can have a swim lane, for example, uh, at assigned to. So it will change the order and label also, right? It will change things for you. So I think not, none of them assigned to anybody. That is why you're not seeing anything here, I guess. But if you See, do you see this here? These are swim lanes created by assigned to now. Can you see that here? Beth, Angelin, ITL user, and whoever for, the, for that matter, right? So we can always do that. So this is where I just want to tell you that you can uh, change things from here. This is where you can see the members. These are all the assignees in this group. You can also add members if you want to. More members to this particular board who, can, who have access to this board if they want to, right? Right now, this is given to these people who have been assigned these incident certificates. You can add label also. You can, you can show labels, you can add label. So for example, uh, you can see this, right? So this is activity stream, which we talked about in the task also. So here you can uh, just comment. Okay comment three, right? So you can, you can see this, right? You can change the work notes. So uh, what I'm going to tell you is you can do a lot of things from here also. This is configuration, show quick panel. Do you see something got, uh, so okay, let me show you again. Can you see this? 
this was there earlier now when i clicked on this it went away right similarly show username so now it will not show you usernames earlier it was showing usernames see this we are showing you the names as well so what i am trying to tell you is you can actually play with these things this is all quick panel uh, which help you to do uh, filtering sorting whatever you want to do it right so there are four parts to this one is task board tools which we have just seen quick panel we have seen already right lanes we already know and these are the cards these are very important features of a visual task board any questions on that we good so while well, alan trying all i am trying to say is because maybe maybe uh, that we are not able to cover each and every tab on the training because it, it is not required at that point of time but then whenever you want to explore the instance from your side you should always try to see okay what what is this what is this just just play around with that thing that is where things become little more interesting feel and you also learn a lot of lot of new things right this is where it helps right so now let me go back to the new topic so i i have covered everything in the task topic do you have anything uh, which you are not clear about okay so i take it as no uh, let's all, right. all good okay so let me move forward to the new topic which is called as notifications so if you see from the from the syllabus we have defined notifications is the next topic right now just just <clears throat> understand the value of notifications you are using lot of apps nowadays right lot e-commerce websites flipkart amazon and what else right so when you order something you get an e sms you get an email as well right uh, you can see it run time from system what is where the things are done track or not so very important thing for any workflow system whenever you design any workflow system or any enterprise system right uh, you notifications play a very very important role because that is where they help you identify which state of the task we are in who it is assigned to so all those notification like for example a new incident has been opened so that that is a notification a new incident has been updated this is also an also a notification right it has been assigned to a particular group to a particular individual this is also a notification its priority has been changed is also a notification it has been resolved is also a notification so it is more about keeping your customers informed so there is concept of kci <clears throat> so the notification sections right so whenever you talk about notifications it is more about that concept or principle of kci keeping your customers informed however you also need to ensure that you should not be <clears throat> bombarding them with so many notifications that they start putting them in junk by default because that is sometimes what happens also when you create lot of notifications okay so there is a significant importance of notifications they are quite powerful because they keep your customers informed they can also see what what it is up to however you also need to make a balance that it should not be overkill them this is where the power of implementation lies that okay you should be creating notification only for the important things not for every uh, tom dick and harry event this is first thing second thing is you should be very clear in terms of who should be updated about these things right it is not that i need to send this notification to everybody i don't need to for example if i am updating an incident uh, from the support so uh, an agent is working on an incident he is updating it and <clears throat> the update he has made is for customer actually and all you have to do is sending a mail to the customer rather than doing it yourself so rather than sending it to the entire team you don't need to send it to the entire team who it is assigned to right this is where it becomes very important and you have to use a wisdom here <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> you have to use a wisdom here in terms of identifying that what this notification will contain who will it send anything else you can think that is important for any notification to that matter i mean your thoughts are welcome but this is generally you do as a part of notifications so let me go here and tell you how notifications work in service now <clears throat> so can you see the system notification area and this is where you have notifications you have lot of things here we'll talk about these many also in detail not in detail because these are not required for your day to day things but then yeah the the most important thing which you actually look into is your notification and for example if i just want to create a new notification then what all things do i need to ensure while creating a new notification that is what is more important here so we now at least you have understood the concept of notification why is it important right and 
So if we remember, we just talked about two or three things. One is who should receive the notification? What will it contain in terms of subject and body? And when to send the notification? Because that event is very important. Because if you remember, if you understand, right? The first thing for any notification to be triggered is that event on which it is going to be triggered, right? Unless and until there is an event in system, you will not be triggering any notification because it will never come to know how will system know otherwise that something has changed. So you have to define that somewhere that this is how I want things to be updated. For example, if I'm just trying to tell you a simple notification or priority change, let's uh, incident priority change. Let's just try this out. <clears throat> now, this, noti and this notification, as I, uh, I as I've been telling you that all of these features we're talking about, they are across the platform, they're across all the tables, all the products. So that is why it gives you an option to select the table. So it is not only ITSM specific, like in Zim problem. You can see a hell lot of tables in this particular uh, drop down, right? So System is a little slow. Uh, bear with me for a minute. So you can see this, the number of tables here, right? That the all all tables there because this is a platform level feature. So you can always do it for any table. Right now I'm just showing you for uh, for a table, right? For incident table, for that matter, right? Right. So if you see, uh, I can category generally we leave uh, blank because this is where there's a, there's something called notification preferences, uh, which you have for uh, end users, right? So if do not provide any category that appears under uncategorized, so generally we leave it this way, but then if you want to select a few things, you can also select it. Uh, you can select, there are some categories already built in for the notifications. I'm just giving you one example right now, right? So, so that should be fine. So let's take it for now. Now, if you see when to send is very important thing here. Now, if you, if you see, there are three options. One is it can be sent when the record, any record is inserted or updated. Now, because we have already selected table as incident, which means we're talking exclusively about that scenario where an incident record is inserted or updated. Both options, yeah, inserted or updated, which means you're creating a new incident or you're updating an existing incident. That is also the case when it is still run. Second is event is fired. We have specified any event already that only for these kind of events, we want to trigger this uh, notification. You can also do that. And this is triggered. This is actually via a flow action, which we generally uh, do using flow designers also. So we will not go into these two right now for time being because we just need to make it a little simpler for us to understand. Right. So, and when it says record inserted or updated, you get both the options inserted also updated. Now it is up to you that you want to say, send this notification only for updated case only for inserted case or both the cases. This is what you want to understand. Now, when I, when we're saying that, okay, record is inserted or updated, we want to send this notification, but at what condition? That is very important, right? Because you can update a record in multiple ways. You can change. There are so many fields on a record. You can change any field on the record and you do not want to send a notification to every single change. So you want to, and because we remember, we said that this notification is for priority change that matter. So what we're doing here is we are just selecting this field as priority. And we are saying priority new is critical. And I can, I can select it is one of, is not one of, there are so many options in this uh, particular filter. So I think filtering or uh, the conditions of filtering are actually very good in service. Now I, I will see that for sure. Now, this is one thing I've done. So when I, what I'm trying to say here is whenever any incident is updated for high priority. I mean, the priority was lower earlier. It was two, three, four, five, and we are changing it to one or else we are creating a new incident with higher priority. Then this notification should be sent. That's the whole idea. So this is the when condition when a notification should be sent. Is that clear? Any questions in this condition? <clears throat> okay. So we'll talk about now it's about who will receive it. Right, so you can send it to specific users and groups or users groups and fields in the record that generate this notification. So you can always select this all option. So users, for example, if I just want to say um, system administrator, I am saying Beth. 
So I just want to send this notification to these users, for example, right? And for example, I want to say that I want to send it to this particular group. So let me take a group for now. Let me take a group called cab approval. I'll send this notification to this group. And when I use the option of subscribable, right? What you see here is subscribable, which means you are giving options to users, end users, that whether do they want to receive this notification or not? Because the moment you make it subscribable, which means in their email body, they'll get an option, click here to unsubscribe. A click to, so the, the, in the body also, and, and even uh, when you go to this particular area, remember, right? We talked about this part, notifications, the client setting. They can also change it from here. They can change it from here also. Yeah. So, which means you're making them, you're giving this option to them. Like it is subscribable. It is up to you whether you want to subscribe it or not. And then if you see user description fields on that record, which generated this notification, for example, I just want to use this one here. I want to use caller. I want to send it to assignment group. So, I mean, whoever the ticket is, so even to these people, we will send the notification, right? So this is where we have decided that who will, so we have decided already when to send it, under what conditions, we've decided who will receive it. And now we can decide also what it will contain because that is very important to decide, right? Or what it will contain, right? So if you see what else is here, so the top, top menu remains same, does not really change. What changes is this part, right? So I can say, uh, sample notification for incident priority change, for example, right? And I can <clears throat> use here, I can, I can, so it is an HTML format, so you can change this particular setting high. And if I want to just select the fields, which fields I want to select, right? And I want to, for example, use the field color here. You see this here, so which means system is by default, and this is a variable set. This is a variable set, which means it is dynamic in nature. So you we understand the concept of constant and variable. For example, if I just type the name hi alok, then it will always write the word hi alok. Now, when I say hi caller ID, in that case, it will pick up the person who has actually called to raise this incident. Right? So this is where you can actually select fields dynamically. You can actually, for example, assign to, you want to send it to assign to also. Assign to, maybe I want to use uh, last name. So I can also use this one, right? I can send it to this one also. So it shows you which field they've actually taken. I've just used this, right? And I'm saying this is a sample notification for priority change for this incident. And when I say which incident I want to say, right? So I can select this also from here because incident is also a field in this particular form, right? Because we have taken it on just a minute. I think I've done. Yeah, to collapse this field. Then you have a field called number. Right. You see this here, right? Thanks and regards. I'll say ID support. Now, did you understand the concept of this whole notification that what all things do we need to configure for a notification, right? We need to configure when the notification will be triggered, who will receive this notification and to whom, sorry, and what will be contained in the subject body. That is the whole understanding here, right? And you can select that. Uh, so by default, we see the templates selected as unsubscribe and preferences, which means you can always uh, see this temp, uh, template and I'll show you how, how does it look like. So if I, for example, click on preview notification, now, do you see this here, preview record, right? These are the users we have decided, defined, and this is something we have, if you remember, there was a field called users and groups, which is where I have defined, okay, to these kind of people, you should send them notifications. That is why it is sending to all the members of that particular group. 
So do you see subject line here? Sample notification for incident priority change, right? Now see this body. So I said it will be sent to caller as well as to assign to. So it has taken both the names here. This is a sample notification. And because right now we are review reviewing this particular notification for this record, that is why it shows you this part, number, incident number, right? And then we have put this, and this is where I was talking about unsubscribe and notification preferences is the template we have used it for this one. This is the one, right? This is how the notification will be sent. Any questions on that part so far? Because this is very important because notification is something you actually do uh, quite a lot when you work as system administrator. You do send a notification. You do configure notifications quite a lot, right? Now, <clears throat> for example, if I use allowed digest, then what will happen? What does it will tell you, ask you to select a template, a subject. So in this case, what happens is generally you don't want to send email for every single condition. Then you kind of uh, combine those emails together for a particular duration and you define that interval. Okay. After this interval, all the emails will go together to the user and one email will go and it will contain all the, all the information together. This is where the digest option comes into play. But generally people, people don't use it. So I'm not going much into that area. And this is where you define the digest intervals. Okay. After what time you want to send it to them. Right. So this is now we have created this incident. So which means if we, if I kind of go to an incident and change its priority, let me see any incident for that matter. And I am changing this priority to one. So right now the priority is five. And I said earlier, if you remember, priority is a read only field. So we will change it to one. And the only way we can change it to one is like this. You can change the impact and urgency and then only the incident will be priority will be one. And I'm just putting the notes here, priority update. So because generally, you know, you understand from any operations perspective, if somebody is changing priority of an incident, it becomes a big point because then you have to actually send communications to a lot of stakeholders. The moment becomes a major incident. The moment becomes top priority incident, a lot of people get involved. So that is why this is a very usual scenario in any organization where they want you to actually configure a special notification whenever you update the priority from any two, three, four, five to one. This is a very, very important scenario. Now, how would you understand whether this particular record we have, we have actually sent the notification automatically, which we planned to send, right? You remember we created a notification just now. We just want to see whether this notification was sent or not. Okay. So let's see it from emails here. This is the email and see the number one, zero, zero, two. So do you see this one, the latest even email? This is the one we just created for incident priority change. It will show you that the email has been sent. So you can see the subject line here, sample notification for incident priority change, right? You can also, you can also see the recipients. The recipients are the ones which we've already identified in the group. And you can see this is the whole HTML body. So it is HTML. That is why it, look, it looks like this. It is a very basic HTML uh, coding, which is, but then it, it happens by default. We, we have not defined the HTML coding. If you remember, we just have used these words, high color. This is a sample notification for this incident. That's it. That is what we actually decided, right? If I want to just see preview this email, the same email, which, so which means that from here, you can see this, right? this is what the email was sent to the end user, to this guy, hi Abraham Lincoln. Okay. This is how you can confirm that this particular incident has been, uh, sorry, the particular notification has been sent. Okay. Now let me see. Generally, uh, in the work note section also, it gets updated that uh, the notification has been sent. I think I've selected everything already by default, so it should be there. But then maybe it is taking some more time. Otherwise, it generally shows up here that a notification has been sent also. Right now it does not come here, but this is what we generally do. 
for notifications right let me any questions on that part because this is very very important no so if i if i see this right so there are push notifications also which is for mobile app so uh, i hope you know if you remember in the now platform user interface interface activity we talked about this concept that you have a mobile app and in fact there are three mobile apps for this now one is for agent uh, second is for now mobile uh, which is for end users and third is for onboarding so these are three different mobile apps which are available in android as well as in um, uh, iOS uh, for for apple phone right so and this is where you define the notifications wherever you have this push notifications they are actually for those particular things uh, for for the, for the mobile apps right we just talked about these two and let me tell you a few more things here right uh, push this yeah and then you have this provider notifications these are actually for agent workspace and they are for uh, agent workspace as well as they are for uh, so what what virtual agent workspace yeah so you have this workspace thing in service now for example okay let me just show you if i have any workspace handy in this i think we have seen these workspaces earlier let me just show you it is yeah maybe agent workspace home right so so this also if i am making a change in this particular ui i can send a notification also this is also an option and this is where i use the the third or third category which we just talked about now if i were to say, tell you a few things few important things here right so if i just go back to notification section so there is one concept called inbound inbound notification right so which means if for example now this is this is a powerful feature in service now for example i am sending an email to service now id i want that email to be converted to a ticket automatically right this is called as inbound action when i say inbound which means system you are sending something in the system based on which it is processing that information and based on that it is creating something in system i mean in this case as i said based on an email you are creating a ticket in system this is called as inbound action now what happens there for example you can if i send any email right uh, for that matter if i send any email then sorry <clears throat> there is confusion sorry yeah so i'm so for example if i just take this email right then i will take this person who is sending the email as a caller right and to to and to whom then we are supposed to send it to actually so you can you have all these email properties which tell you from to date subject right so the subject can be the short description of an incident this date is the time when the incident get actually opened this two in this case it will be actually your uh, service on email id on which on whom he is going to send that particular information so this is the concept of inbound actions wherein you you create a ticket in service now based on that idea right so this is also you have to understand this is inbound notification then if i will tell you uh, i think notifications we have seen let me show you any other notification so there is some problem at the so this is the workspace thing we will we'll cover the topic a little later then what i'm trying to make what i'm trying to tell you is if i make something change some changes here then also we can send notifications generally service now prefers to use workspace nowadays because this is more user friendly rich with rich interfaces a uh, lot of uh, intuitive features this is what is preferable nowadays to be used okay now for example if i just want to say show you something incident opened and unsigned see this so this is the table uh, this is the name of notification this is a table we are using here this is the category so if you remember we had earlier the category called uncategorized in this case they have used a category called it service management if you want to see what this category means you can always see okay open the record this is the category they have just designed because they just want to decide okay some notification to send for it service management some are for it operations management some is for hr so all, all that you can you can actually do there right uh, application global which means it will be sent at at the global scope active we have it is already active when to send can you see this record inserted or updated but then they have selected com 
option of only inserted not updated which means if i update a new record this notification will not be sent it will be sent only when a new record will be created in system and what are the conditions which are to be satisfied first is that assigned to is empty and active is true only on these condition this particular email will be sent who will receive it you can see they've, they've defined you've not defined anything which means they just don't want to define anything right now uh, but yeah if you want to you can subscribable which means uh, people can actually subscribe it from their side and this is where they have put email template if you see they've used a different template here not the subscriber references one they've used incident header details it is a different template you can always go and see what kind of template it is so it, it tells you how how it, will it look like they've put in so which means the moment i use the template i don't have to define the message in the html body because it's already defined here can you see this here right the, the, the reason i define a template because i if i want to reuse this particular notification at multiple places i can reuse it that is why you define the email templates so that is why they've kept this particular thing as completely blank because they've already defined it in this template and in even the subject line they have used the task active number as a variable so which means it will change now let us see this preview notification. You see this here? Now you did not actually find anything in the email body, but still you can see it here. The reason is because they have defined it in a template and we have used the template here. Now you can see this here, uh, take me to the incident. This is a UI action which they have taken, for example. I click on here. I'll directly go to the incident. So this is the same, this is the same thing which is going to happen when this email comes in your mailbox and you can always, even from that email, if you click, you will be reached to this particular incident. Okay. Now these are the notifications we have just seen that these are various. So you can see out of the box, there are 386 notifications. So many notifications. I mean, <clears throat> that is why it is quite easy to configure a service now, even for a new setup. Because out of the box, they have kind of done a lot of things which you can just reuse. You might need to change some few things, but then, yeah, if you just want to onboard the customer, it is not a very big thing to do. It is quite easy because you have notifications already there, right? Sometimes you can also send notifications using email scripts. So if you remember when we were actually, when we were actually here and we were defining the notification part, there was an option of events. Right. So, for example, I was talking about this part when we said when an event is fired. So, the moment you say event name, these are those email scripts you're talking about. This is where you select them. They've already written some scripts. You just have to select that script here. Based on this particular script, the event should be fired. If I select a triggered, right? In that case, it is not asking you to choose anything. So the idea is this, this email script, which you are talking about here, this event name is actually written on those email scripts. I'm going back to email scripts. I'm just showing you how, how it looks like. I'm not editing this report, but then yeah, if you want to edit it, you have to go here. This is a script they have written. So as you know already that uh, when there are developers in service now, uh, they actually they write, uh, they actually write the scripts, right? You, they can always write the scripts. So based on the script, you can see you can always see from here itself what are the variables which are defined in this particular script, right? Current template, email, email action, event. So this is what they have written in the code. And here also you can define whom to send, what to send. But this is an advanced situation which is not by default <clears throat> available using that option which we just see for record inserted or updated this is a customized behavior which generally you have to write in the script okay and sometimes they use these scripts even in these notifications which are already there so you can always do this these are notification categories if you remember we just talked about them uh uncategorized the one which we said it service management is the one we said so these are different categories in fact i would say categories uh, are defined defined more in terms of the modules you have in service now. That is why you have it here, uh, right? Digest intervals, I think we talked about it, that if you want to send uh, one single email rather than sending one, one email to, uh, to few users, 
together. This is how you define the digest interval. Notation categories we talked about templates. So these are those templates we, we have seen that, right? We have selected one of the templates sometime back. Uh, and then it automatically populates, for example, let me just open this template for you. See how it looks like. So what I'm trying to tell you is the moment you start actually playing around the system, it'll, you'll get more confidence in terms of how it works. Right? That is the whole idea. Now, this is the template change management cap workbench. So if you remember for other templates, the, the application was global. In this case, it is, it is only valid for change management care workbench. There's a feature called care workbench for change management module for which this template is used. Now table, they've said cab agenda. They've already said in subject agenda items coming up with a discussion cab meeting, right? So they will, these two are variables. The moment you see this dollar button, which means they're actually variables. So that it will take from that particular record with, from which you are sending this particular notification. So can you see this here? I, the agenda item dollar task is coming up with discussion cab meeting. So you can use this template right? anywhere and message text, SMS, so if I want to go maybe show notification scripts, this is the notification they are, they are using it for. So in this particular notification, they've actually used this particular template. Do you see this? So you can also see that this template, which I'm talking about is used in which notification. You, you might have a situation where one single template is used in multiple notifications. And that is the actual use case because yeah, that you actually create templates only for those cases, which it can be reused, right? In this case, it is used only for this particular item. For example, if I just want to open this record. So in this record, this is a notification record, right? Here, they're using this template. Can you see this here? Cap agenda item about to be discussed. This is a template we are referring here. This is a template. So this template is being used in this notification and it tells you, okay, where exactly to be. And all of these things which we actually talked about, uh, what do we define for a notification? <clears throat> this is the email script based on which this particular record is being created. So if you, if you see this, they have, for this particular case, they have defined all three things. They have defined email template as well as email script, as well as a notification. And they're using them in this particular case. Sorry. So the interesting part is because they have defined it already at the template level, right? They have used the template. So that is why they are not calling the script in this particular notification because the moment they have defined it for a template and you use a template anywhere in any notification, it will automatically call you for that particular script. So this is a nested loop, I would say. So the top level is notification. Second level is template. Third level is script. So because you're, you're defining the template notification, so you don't need to define the script again in the, and this is the actual script based on which it is sending the notification. Right, and you should not be actually editing any out of the box scripts. Uh, then it becomes customization. So customization ideally should not be done by administrators. First of all, it should be done by developers, and only after due diligence from the architects, from the from the seniors, that should we do that because it might have an impact on upgrades, migrate migrations, and and other things also. Right. So this is what I was trying to tell you that when you say notification, these are all things you have to take care of. But as I said, the most important thing you will be dealing with day in and day out is this level, which is, this is the area you're going to work, work, come in and you're going to write the notifications. Others, you might not need every single day, All right? Templates we've talked about, uh, notification filters. These are some filters they've already defined, defined for notifications. So maybe if I go to unsubscribe, In this, they have not defined any condition. I mean, just a demo kind of record, I would say. Push notification, we have just talked about, uh, they are for uh, the mobile apps, right? I don't want to start a new topic, which is reporting, because it will take some more time. 
but yeah inbound notification is something you need to understand uh, what is inbound as i said uh, that whenever let me see if i can show you any inbound notification right so they have defined a whdl web service for inbound notification they are taking all these things from that particular thing i cannot define it right now because i need to you know use the email settings for particular sample server which which you know covering this particular thing because it is not required to actually work on those parts but the idea is when you define this is a web service which is defined for inbound notifications otherwise the idea i was telling you that the reason you define in mode notification especially when you receive an email and based on that either an email or any record for example i have done integration uh with service now with sap hr system for example which has database of all the users right uh, the moment there is an uh, entry coming from third party i should be able to process this entry and take the correct take the required actions for example i want to create a task the moment i get an user in the system okay onboard this user for example i can do that also so this is also you can do as a part of inbound so inbound action is a powerful feature not only for notifications it is it can be you can use any inbound action actually for that particular matter based on the use case whatever the use case you have and push actions i think we have already seen all of that right so if anything is not clear you can let me know we can discuss around it because we have not much time left so i will not uh, prefer to start a new topic because we will not be able to cover a significant part of it just go through the out of box notifications you can just if you want to see okay which, for example when you do trouble shooting right and then somebody is telling you that i have not received a particular notification then what will you do first of all you'll come here and see whether you have a notification defined for that situation that is the first use case right so somebody is telling you that the incident got assigned to me and ideally speaking as per the process i was supposed to get a notification now you will first of all see in the system do you have a notification defined for incident assigned to because unless you have it you will never send it to so you send it to it right send send to the user so how do we do that you you just filter out all the notifications for this incident table and you can see here who it is going to you can see this right assigned to see the assigned to right so incident commented which means it will go to assigned to see this incident assigned to for example my group right it will go to assigning group we are not sending it to individual users here in this case right you can also see for example your caller tells you that okay i have not received a notification for uh, incident resolution i mean my incident got resolved but i did not see a notification you can you first of all you have to see there is a notification for resolved which says active is true and these are the conditions uh that okay it changes to actually resolve and who who does it go to it goes to caller id right so if that particular user id or group not, not individual and see because we are talking always about the dynamic for example this one let me open this incident sorry open this notification for you did i not So, yeah there is a notification for updated it is not for inserted because why it is not for inserted because it is for incident resolved so incident is already there in system you don't need to create a, a notification for incident uh, sorry for inserted case right okay one more thing yeah i just called it you can also send a meeting invitation based on an event this is also a kind of notification so general thing which people do is actually email but if there is a use case when you think that rather than sending an email i want to send a meeting invitation that is also you can do as a part of notification that's a very interesting feature yeah now yeah i was talking about this case particular case so incident changes resolved universal request is empty this these are the conditions they have taken and this is the script they have used here the i'll not go much into script as i said we are not covering the not the development or scripting part in this particular course but then yeah this is how they are using it and if you see who who are they sending it to let us see this see if this selected users group in fields called caller and this is what i was telling you even to event creator who has created the event even to that person we are sending this particular script now 
which script is being used here how will you know that you can come here you can see which script is being used here you can you can even check it from here as, as well right you can it will show you uh, notification scripts four scripts they are using for this particular situation right this is how you can do troubleshooting first of all you have to see whether which table he i mean which recording is talking about if he's talking about incident record you have to go back to incident table and see whether you have a notification defined is that notification active do you have the right person in that notification in the who will receive list right and do you have the right when to condition to trigger that particular notification so this is all you have to understand from notifications perspective i think yeah today's topic is closed i will just stop the recording now and we will meet tomorrow.